and welcome back to Baldy Cats. Now, you've read the title of the video, hopefully you know what to expect, so let's just get straight to it with this question. Now, there will be four genuine GCSE physics questions in this video. I will explain every question and then I will ask you to pause it. And when you unpause it, I will explain the answer and you can mark your own work. Here we go. So in this question, we have a rock that has a weight of 150 newtons. That's what the question means when it says the Earth exerts a force of 150 newtons on it. That's its weight. As it falls to the ground, 2,700 joules of work is done on it. What is the height of the cliff? Pause now. Right, let's see how you did. And the whiteboard's back. This is essentially a work done question. Work done is uh, energy transferred, how much energy has been transferred. We calculate that by the force times the distance. This question is trying to ask us how far uh, the rock has fallen. How tall is a cliff? It's going to be the same as the distance the rock has fallen. So if I rearrange this equation, distance can be work done over force. Now the question gives us the force. It says the weight of the, the rock is 150 newtons. That's the force that's being pulled down towards the centre of the earth with. The work done, well that is the energy transferred. And you've got to recognise that in this question, the rock has got gravitational potential energy and as it falls, that is being turned into kinetic energy and it tells us how much work, how much tra is being transferred and that's 2,700 joules. You'll get one mark for getting this far and then if you can use your calculator properly and do 2,700 divided by 150 to get 18 metres, you'll get your second mark. Let's look at the second part of this question. Now the second part of the question is asking us how much kinetic energy the rock will have just before it hits the ground. You may need some of the information from part one. Pause it now, unless you want the answer. Now this question was only worth one mark because really it's quite straightforward. We said that work done was an energy transfer. And in this case, gravitational potential energy is being transferred to kinetic energy. So if I want to know how much kinetic energy the rock has before it hits the ground, all I need to know is how much gravitational it had to start with. And we're told in the question, we're told that 2,700 joules of work are done on that rock. So 2,700 joules have turned from gravitational to kinetic. So that is simply our answer. No complex calculation required. Next bit. Now again, you might need some of the information from part one of this question, but it's asking you how fast will the rock be traveling just before it hits the bottom of that cliff? Pause it now. Right, let's see how we did. Kinetic energy is calculated by a half mass times velocity squared. We can simplify that to V equals the square root of 2700 divided by 0.5 times 15. If you get this far, you've got one mark. And if you punch it into calculator correctly to get 90 meters per second, you get your second mark. Let's get on to question two. So question two comes from the astronomy part of the physics GCSE. Here we see absorption spectra from four different galaxies and we are simply asked which one of those galaxies A, B, C or D is furthest away from us. It does say explain so you're going to have to back up your answer with some logic. I'll pause it or you should pause it now. Right, if you don't know anything about absorption spectra I will be doing a, a Baldy Cats video on that so you can learn a bit more about it but for now the answer was C and the reason the answer was C is if you look at the, the picture again, here it is, we can see that those black lines, especially the thick black line on the left, look at that one, that seems to be shifted to the right hand side more so than on any of the other spectra. We call that red shift. Now the further that's shifted to the right, the bigger the red shift is and that indicates that the galaxy is further away from us traveling at a faster velocity. So for the three marks for that, you get one mark for identifying C, you get one mark for saying there was a bigger red shift and you get one mark for implying that the big red shift means it's further away from us. Next question. So compared to other GCSE standard questions, this is actually quite a tough one. You've got to know quite a few things to be able to get all four marks on this question. But essentially, we just have some power lines hanging from pylons in the air. They are at 90 degrees of the Earth's magnetic field. Why are they continually experiencing a changing force? Pause the video now. Okay, so before I tell you how to mark your answer on that, let's put it into a little bit of context. When we teach electromagnetism at GCSE, we teach that a wire uh, carrying a current placed inside a magnetic field will have a force acting upon it. And that force can often be enough to move the wire. That's how motors work. 
Now, how do I calculate the size of that force? I use the equation B times I times L times sine theta, where B is the magnetic flux density, which, although it's not um, absolutely correct, we're just going to use to mean the strength of the magnetic field for now. I is the current carrying through the wire, and L is the length of wire that is inside that magnetic field. Now, sine theta is the angle at which the wire is placed in that magnetic field. In this question, we're told that's 90 degrees. <clears throat> well, sine 90 is 1, so we can get rid of that from the equation. So we're left with this, F equals B times I times L. So why does that force constantly change? Well, it all comes down to the fact that um, in the UK, in the national grid, the current in the wire is an alternating current. Now, if the current alternates, then it goes up and down like this, and the size of that current is constantly changing. So if the size of the current is constantly changing, then the force on the wire is also constantly changing. But it's not just the size of the current that changes, it's the direction of the current that changes as well, which means the direction of the force on the wire is also going to change. So to get you four marks in this question, we need to say, number one, that the current is an alternating current. Number two that the force on the wire is going to depend on the size and the direction of the current. And then for marks three and four, we are going to say that the size of the current is changing and the direction of the current is changing. OK, next question. Right, an IC is one to finish. Describe how thermal energy from nuclear fission can be used to turn the electrical generator in a power station. Pause it now. Right, so on the surface of it, because this question mentions nuclear fission, you might be forgiven for thinking it's a little bit harder than it actually is. But actually, it's talking about the thermal energy or the heat produced from nuclear fission. Um, nuclear fission itself is irrelevant. Just how does the heat lend to turning the generator? And it's the same in all power stations, whether we're burning coal, oil or gas. Essentially, the heat is used to boil water into steam and the steam turns a turbine. And they are your two marks. One mark for mentioning steam, one mark for mentioning turns to turbine. How did you do? Right, well, thanks for sticking with it this far. And if you have stuck with it this far, you probably want to know how you did uh, in terms of what grade you got. So there were 14 marks out of these four physics questions. And if you wanted um, a nine, or that would be an A star. You needed 13 out of 14. If you were happy just with a pass, uh, which in old money would have been a C, but on the new grading system would have been a five, then you needed about eight. Um, let me know what you think, how you got on in the comments section. And if you want more of these little tests, then they're dead easy for me to make. I can make, uh, make them a weekly thing. And if it was boring and shit, then tell me and I'll not do another one. Okay, bye-bye.